Good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking some time to join us today. I want to begin by thanking Jason Carrion, the principal here at Cayuga. Jason, thank you for hosting us uh, this morning. Um, and I want to start today with an important update about our plan to return students to in-person learning. And we understand the urgency of getting our young people back. We now know, as I indicated a, a week ago, that particularly our youngest students are now falling further behind, and we have data to support that. And in Philadelphia, one of the poorest big cities in America, the pandemic has devastated communities in poverty. And research shows that children of color have suffered the most. Many of our students are struggling academically, and others are suffering feelings of isolation, depression, after being on a computer screen away from their teachers and their peers now for almost a year. That's why I'm deeply disappointed to share that due to ongoing third party mediation between the district and the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers, we will be delaying the, the return of students into our schools. We, are now, we now plan to begin phasing in students on Monday, March 1st, beginning with pre-K through second grade students whose families chose hybrid learning in the fall. I believe we, families, teachers, the school district, elected officials, and our unions all agree on the importance of reopening public schools, particularly here in the city of Philadelphia. The dispute, however, has centered on how we do that safely. These are legitimate concerns, and the district needs to address them. So today, I want to make it clear that we at the district will continue to work with the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers and the Philadelphia Department of Public Health to facilitate the safe return of teachers and students through the following measures. Building, safe, building safety. We have spent $250 million to safeguard the health and well-being of teachers and students as they return to our schools. We're fully committed to following the guidance of health experts to support student and staff safety. We appreciate legitimate concerns about building safety, and we agree that no one should be asked to return to school unless the proper precautions are in place. Layers of safety. We know that the best way to enhance the health and safety of all is to have multiple layers of safety. We have put in place extensive health and safety protocols for students and for staff. We have put, oh, we have, extent, we have extensive inventories of PPE for staff and students to support mandatory mask wearing and facial covering in schools, as well as new classroom and, ba and bathroom setups to ensure social distancing. Touchless hand sanitizer stations in all hallways, plexiglass partitions in offices and for small group instruction, cleaning supplies in classrooms, maximum occupancy signs outside of each room, safety signage throughout schools, and enhanced cleaning protocols using EPA-approved cleaning products. These measures meet and, in fact, exceed the conditions that the district and the PFT agreed to in the memorandum of agreement we both signed last year. To further build on these layers of safety, we are also announcing today that the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia has secured ample supplies of rapid testing kits. And we will make rapid testing available to all teachers and staff working in their schools to help detect positive COVID-19 cases and prevent the spread of the virus. And in partnership with CHOP and the PDPH, we will begin rolling out COVID-19 vaccine appointments to staff. I'm thankful to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and Philadelphia Department of Public Health for their support in helping as many educators, education workers in their city as possible safely receive the vaccine in the coming weeks. Now, I'd like to introduce our Chief Talent Officer, Larissa Shambo, who will discuss more about the rollout of the vaccine program. Larissa? Good morning. Um, I am really excited to be here today to share the rollout of vaccines to our educational staff in the city of Philadelphia. Starting this morning, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia will begin sending out invitations to thousands of our staff 
and staff in other educational organizations across the city. The first priority group will be invited this week that includes staff members who have been working on site for months in our buildings, such as our food service workers, our principals, cleaning staff, and so on. We are also prioritizing those staff who are set to return with our students in the first pre-K to second grade group. Other groups will follow from there, and with the next phase being a priority of staff who will be returning later after the pre-K to two phase in. It is important to note that not everyone in the first phase will get an invitation on the same day. So if you are a staff member who's working on site today and you don't get an invitation today, don't worry, it is on its way. We know that many of our employees are very excited to schedule an appointment and we are trying to make it as easy as possible. There will be seven locations across the city of Philadelphia that our staff will be and educational workers will be able to select. One, um, one location will be at CHOP itself Four will be in our school district of Philadelphia buildings, one will be in an archdiocese school, and one will be in a private independent school. We wanna make sure that access to the vaccines is as easy as possible. We've also created hotlines for our staff to help them to register for these appointments, to be able to make it as easy as possible to receive a vaccine. While the vaccine is not mandatory for staff, we do hope that once staff receive their appointment invitation, they will choose to get vaccinated as another layer of safety for themselves, their families, and the students and staff that they interact with. For those individuals who want more information on the vaccine, for our staff, we are having a CHOP provide a town hall to them tomorrow with medical experts who will discuss the vaccine and its effectiveness. Being able to provide easier access to a vaccine is incredibly exciting in and of itself, but what makes this launch so exciting is that it was done in true partnership and collaboration with educational institutions across the city, with our partners in the archdiocese, private independent schools coordinated by Germantown Friends, and more than 70 charter schools coordinated by the Office of Charters in the School District of Philadelphia. With so many challenges we have encountered in the pandemic, we have also found ways to lean on and learn from each other to meet a common goal, ensuring that all of our children in the city have access to safe in-person learning. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Dr. Height. Thank you. Next, I'd like to uh, bring up to the podium an individual who has been working with us since March uh, in partnership to help us understand the latest information about the virus and to ensure that uh, we are taking all the appropriate precautions to provide those, la that layer, those layers of safety that I talked about earlier. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Susan Coffin, physician for the Division of Infectious Disease at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Dr. Coffin, thanks for being here. Hello, everyone. Um, for those of you who I've had a chance to interact with before, I'm a pediatric infectious disease physician who spent um, many, many years in the area of working in um, infection control. And so the, the issues that we're talking about here today that we've been talking about for the past 11 months are really issues that are near and dear to my heart. And it is really an exciting moment, I think, right now here in Philadelphia. We're seeing an opportunity that the city is affording us by having a moment where we're get, achieving the lowest level of virus transmission that we've seen in many, many months. And when we add to that all of our months and months of experience, learning how to return to some of our um, essential functions within our larger society, we know how to wear masks, we know how to distance, we know how to keep ourselves clean and um, our environment clean and how to keep ourselves safe. And I really do believe when we add to that these additional opportunities of having in-school testing and having an offering a vaccine to people who are working within school settings, this is an amazing moment to begin to return our kids back to in-person learning. As a pediatrician, I think this is incredibly important. I'm here with educators, so I, it's really not appropriate for me to underline all of the, the traditional learning and educational losses that have happened. But, you know, as someone deeply concerned with children's development, I know school does a lot of other things, and coming to school does a lot of other things for kids. It gives them a sense of purpose. It helps them organize their day. It helps them create this, that sense of independence that they can leave home, succeed at something, and return home back to the safety of their family. We need to instill these habits, these feelings of success and mastery that our children have not been able to have in the past months. 
So with that, I'd just like to say, this is for me an exciting moment, and I hope that others see it as the same. Thanks. Thanks. That includes the announcement part of this um, this morning. So we'll now available to take questions. And Monica or someone, I'm going to ask you all to. Oh, I'm sorry. Was Jason supposed to? Oh, am I supposed to introduce Jason? I'm sorry, Jason. So, so with, <laughs> the next coming to the podium is the principal of Cayuga, Jason. Carry on, Jason. <laughs> My bad. That's okay. <laughs> well, good morning. I was just going to speak a little bit about what we've done as a school to prepare uh, for the uh, eventual opening of schools. Uh, you know, we've a couple layers here, with myself with my assistant principal, Mrs. Walter. We've really worked with teachers, uh, you know, providing professional development around healthy and safe po safety protocols, but also around what hybrid instruction was going to look like once students are in the building and you have students at home. And then also working with uh, students and families, especially making sure children are going to feel safe and comfortable wearing a mask. So we have them right now online wearing masks and getting prepared eventually when we come back into the building. And then the third layer for us has been facilities wise. You know, every day, uh, assistant principal and myself, we, we walk the building, we meet with our facility staff. We, you know, we're trying to figure out if there's something that needs to be fixed or adjusted. How can we uh, do that? How can we support each other? So those are some of the things we're doing here. Um, and hopefully, you know, when that when the time comes, you know, we'll be ready uh, as a school to receive children again. Thank you.